So on a map, we've seen that there are three ways to measure the spatial difference between two points. One is the coordinate spatial difference, and that of course depends on the coordinate system that you choose. There's also the distance between two points, which is the length of the, of the line, straight line connecting those two points. And then there's also the path length, which would be the length of a path not necessarily a line that takes you from one point to another. So three different ways of measuring a position difference. What we'll do now is go back to special relativity and think about space-time and space-time diagrams, and we'll see that there are um, three ways of measuring time differences between two events, and each of those ways corresponds to one of the ways of measuring spatial differences on a map. So one of the ways we measured the separation or difference between two points in space on a map was by using coordinates, and we call that the coordinate separation. And the way we did that is we had our two points, and we drew on coordinates, and then we just used the diagram, the coordinate axes, to read the coordinates. So we might read 390, 263, or in red, 217, 415. So what would that look like in uh, space-time? Well, it's basically the same thing. It's just instead of looking at a map in X and Y, we look at a space-time diagram in X and T, and then we read off the um, coordinates of our two, in this case, events, instead of points in space, A and B. And we've seen that in different reference frames, you would get different time values and hence different time intervals. But that's not that big a deal. I mean, it's weird because we're not used to thinking about time in this way. But that's very similar to this idea of getting different um, coordinate values in space. So, um, the analog in special relativity is what we call coordinate time. And that's reference frame R E F ref. Let's call this reference frame dependent. If you choose a different reference frame, you'll get a different coordinate time. Just like this is um, coordinate. Dependent. If you choose different coordinates, you will get um, a different coordinate separation. Another way we measure the separation between points is the distance. And the distance is just the length of the straight line between points. It's the length of this brown line on this example. This has some nice features. It's unique. And by that I mean, just geometrically, there's one and only one line that connects two points. So there's no ambiguity there. And that leads to the fact that it is coordinate independent. Independent. And by that I mean using any reference frame or any uh, coordinate system, you will get the same distance. So in the blue and the red, they may disagree on the particular coordinates, but everybody agrees on the distance. The distance is something that's not um, a product of the convention we choose for how we want to measure y and x. It's something that's deeply physical, deeply real, um, that everybody agrees on. And we have a nice formula for this. We know how to calculate distance, and it's from the Pythagorean theorem, that the distance between two points is 
the x difference squared plus the y difference squared square root. All right, so these are all the nice things about distance. What's the analog in special relativity? What's the notion of distance that carries over to space-time diagrams? Um, and the answer is it's a quantity known as the space-time interval. So the space-time interval. So we need to think about, on a space-time diagram, what is like a straight line? What are things that appear as straight lines? Well, those are, are things that move at constant uh, velocity. So something that moves at constant velocity is a straight line. And now imagine we had a straight line, or we had a clock, a clock that's moving at a constant velocity that goes through both of the events um, in space-time. The time as measured by that clock would be the space-time interval. All right, so that's a little abstract. Let me, let me write that down. So the space-time interval is defined as follows. It's the time between two events as measured by an inertial clock present at both events. So an inertial clock means a clock in an inertial reference frame, one that's moving at a constant velocity. It's not accelerating. And the clock has to be present at both events. All right, let me, let me draw a picture for this that I think will help. So here's a space-time diagram. So now I have time and position x. So let's say we have two events on this. Say event A and event B. All right, so if I want a clock that's here and here, so at this point in space-time and this point in space-time, and I want that clock to be inertial, so that means it's going to be moving at a constant speed, which means it will be, its world line will be described by a straight line. So, let's do this. And so this is gonna be the world line of a clock. So we have a clock that's present at both events, and it's inertial because it's moving at a constant speed. It can't be at rest because then um, it wouldn't be able to travel over here two seconds to the right to get to that. So if you've got a clock that's inertial that's present at both events, that time interval, the time interval as measured by that same clock, how many seconds click on this clock that's present here and present there, that would be the inertial time. The symbol for, uh, sorry, that would be the space-time interval, not the inertial time. The symbol for the space-time interval is delta s. And we would like to have a formula for this, just like we do for distance. Um, and Figuring out that formula is actually something that we're going to do in the next unit, in unit four. So it sure looks like it ought to be delta x squared plus delta t squared, but we'll see that that's not quite right, that relativity requires us to come up with something different. So in any event, the space-time interval, we don't have a formula for it, but conceptually we have a picture of it. And let me mention that like the distance, it's unique. in the sense that it's unambiguous. There's only one way to draw a straight line between two points in space-time. And so there's no ambiguity or choice there. And um, it also is going to be coordinate independent or reference frame independent. And um, well, I'll, I'll make that claim, uh, I'll back up that claim 
in, in Unit 4 when we discuss this in more detail. Alright, so we have coordinate time and the space-time interval.